Hi there, this is Laura and I'm back with a couple of clean and simple slider cards featuring the hearts entwined dynamics, which I'm totally in love with. It's so elegant and versatile. When you pull the slider panel, one of the hearts turns red. In the second card, which is actually a magic color slider card, all of the cute different patterns from the sweet stack paper pack are revealed when the slider panel is pulled. As you can see, you don't always need critters to make interactive cards. Let's start by cutting a panel out of heavyweight white cardstock. If possible, I like to do all of my die cutting in one go. Here I had to make an exception and cut out the notch from the peekaboo wheel dynamics first. I used the largest die from the Dynamics A2 Stitched Rectangle Stack Set 1 Dynamics, so my panel ended up measuring 4 and 1 eighths of an inch by 5 and 3 eighths. I forgot to mention that I backed my cardstock with stick it adhesive before die cutting it. I also cut a second piece of the entwined hearts, and here I'm layering them before moving on to the next step. You can of course use liquid adhesive if you want. Okay, so here are all of the elements that are needed to make this card. The main panel and the layered die cut hearts, a slider panel which is about three and a half inches wide, a piece of patterned paper that measures four and a half by five and three fourths, and a card base measuring nine by five and three fourths of an inch. We also need a white panel which will act as a sort of mask. I've used the notch die on it as well, and now I'm going to put my main panel on top of it and trace around it with a pencil. Next, we insert the die cut hearts in their place and lightly trace the inside of our main heart. We don't have a lot of wiggle room since the die cut has such thin outlines, so it's important to be as accurate as possible. It's time to use a sharp craft knife and cut out both the heart and the panel. Let's see how it looks before we move on. You shouldn't be able to see any extra paper through the hole. Just like this. Now we can peel off the backing and glue the main panel and die cut to that hand cut panel. I chose a really clean and simple look so that the red heart would pop even more, but I could have used gold or even a black outline. This is totally up to you. After letting the stick it adhesive bond under a large acrylic block, I'm going to apply some baby powder to the exposed adhesive on the back of those partial outlines. I could also just use my finger to rub it off, but this is a good method as well. Next I'm going to attach the slider panel to the back of the main panel with some tape, so that I can once again trace the inside of the heart as well as the semicircular shape of the notch to the slider panel. We need to do this to make sure that our sentiment isn't visible through those openings. You can see that I've left a margin that's about one fourth of an inch wide on both sides as well as to the lower edge. This is where the strips of foam tape will go later on. Here I'm just stamping the sentiment from the Sweet Nothing stamp set with some black hybrid ink. It goes so well with the theme of this card and it was the perfect size, so I felt really lucky. Once again I need to draw some lines on my slider panel, but this time it's to figure out where my red strip should go so that it's visible when the slider panel is totally pulled out. At first I colored the strip with Copic markers, but it turned out a little bit too dark, so I later added a strip of cardstock which was about one and a half inches tall. To me, the easiest way of making the slider panel stop at the perfect spot is to use a strip of cellophane or thin packaging plastic. It should be a smidge narrower than the slider panel. I first attach one end to the back of the main panel with some strong double-sided tape and the other one to the back of the slider panel. It's difficult to see what I'm doing because of the clear plastic, but it should be as straight as possible and quite taut. When that's done, I just cut the excess with a pair of scissors, and that's it. 
It's time to assemble the card. I'm using thin strips of foam tape that are about one fourth of an inch wide. It's quite easy to glue them to the three sides of the back of my panel. I just use the slider panel and the lines that I drew earlier as a guide. When that's done, we can adhere the pattern paper to the card base and move on to the final step. Before moving on to the next step, it's always a good idea to use a strip of tape to make sure that the slider panel doesn't move. Now we just reveal the sticky of the foam tape and carefully glue the main panel to the card base. Okay, let's try it out. It's a little bit difficult to grab the slider panel right now. Luckily, this is easily solved with an enamel shape. I used a triangle, but you could also use an arrow or an upside-down heart, or any shape if you stamp the word pull nearby. There are many ways to avoid this problem when creating a slider card. We can either die-cut a notch in the card base, add a loop made out of ribbon, or a pull tab in the shape of a circle, for example. Now it's a lot better. Before moving on to the second card, here are a couple of pictures of it after I added some colorful enamel dots. It's very clean and simple, but also surprising and special enough to give to a loved one. I'm starting out with a piece of cardstock that measures 10 and a quarter by 6 and 3 eighths of an inch, and I'm scoring it at the 2 and 5 eighths mark and 7 and 3 quarters mark. You could also do this by hand just by grabbing the two ends and pushing them together and down. It's not necessary for them to meet exactly in the middle. We will also need a white panel that is 5 inches wide and 6 and 3 eighths of an inch tall. Next, let's grab our stitched rectangle die and peekaboo wheel notch die and adhere them to the front with some washi tape. If we have a large die cutting machine, we can run this through open, and if not, we just need to fold the flaps forward and run it through that way. Now we can insert that white panel again and temporarily adhere the entwined hearts die to it with some tape. We're going to use the inlay technique, but I won't get into too much detail to keep this video short. I've applied a bunch of tape to a piece of printer paper and now I'm going to glue my die-cut panel to it and insert all of the pieces in different patterns. Don't lose those white pieces since we're going to need at least a couple of them to finish the panel. I start by inlaying the entwined hearts outline in gold. You can of course choose whatever color you prefer, however the gold adds a very elegant touch to a clean and simple card. And here I've skipped to the result. Doesn't it look pretty? Now I'll just grab a bone folder and a piece of printer paper and rub those pieces into the adhesive. I have also cut a piece of acetate that's slightly larger than my window and here I'm just attaching it to the back of the frame with some score tape. First I'm laying it on top with the sticky side upwards to see where I need to place it exactly and then I can flip it and carefully glue it in place. For the slider panel, I started with a 5 by 5 and 7 eighths of an inch piece of white cardstock and cut off two thin slivers on the sides to create a stop. We can't use cellophane this time because the panel needs to slide all the way up to reveal the inlay hearts. Sorry, I forgot to zoom out for this next segment, but I'm just adding a quarter inch wide strip of cardstock with score tape on both sides to the back of the lower part of the frame. It'll stop the slider panel from sliding out of its sleeve. You could also use foam tape, but I find that it's better to create your own dimensional adhesive from the same color as your panel when there's little space available. And before moving on, we need to check that we can close the flaps. Next, I'm cutting two tiny pieces of that strip of homemade dimensional tape. They will go in the upper corners of the frame to stop the slider panel from sliding too far. And once again we have to check that we can close the flaps. Everything looks good, so now we just need to glue the inlay panel to the dimensional strips of adhesive. Please make sure that the hearts are facing the right way before that. 
Now we can apply double-sided adhesive to the back of our inlay panel and close those flaps definitely to complete the card panel or sleeve. I've cut another outline piece in gold cardstock backed with sticky adhesive and here I'm adhering it to the acetate, aligning it with our inlay panel. Next I rub it with a bone folder to make it stick perfectly and then I can add a sentiment and embellish the card. Once again I will also need to add an enamel triangle to make it easier to grab the sliding panel. I love the effect of this card, especially when you slide the panel slowly. Here you can see how much larger the second card is compared to the first one. A final picture of both of them together while I thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. You can check out all of the details and the list of products that I used in the description box. Like and comment if you feel like it. I'll be back next month. Bye bye! Hasta luego!